This episode of The Startup Life is sponsored by SaveTheChildren.org. Startup Nation, Save the Children believes every child deserves a future. In the United States and around the world, they work every day to give children a healthy start in life, the opportunity to learn, and protection from harm. They deliver lasting results for millions of children, including those hardest to reach. They do whatever it takes for children every day and in times of crisis transforming their lives and the future we share. Startup Nation, right now, the coronavirus is the biggest global health crisis in our lifetime. It threatens children in every way. COVID-19 has already left many children without caregivers, out of school, and exposed to violence and exploitation. Child poverty is rising. With your support, we can help children in unsafe households and help support distance learning in the face of school closures. Here are some ways your support can make a difference. For just $5, you can buy a baby's first book, providing comfort and inspiring lifelong learning. And for $25, you can serve a nutritious breakfast and lunch to five out-of-school children in need. And there's many other ways you can help support Startup Nation. So go to savethechildren.org slash savekids or www.savethechildren.org forward slash savekids. So if you're ready to make a difference, Startup Nation, remember, savethechildren.org. Make the change for children. This episode of The Startup Life is tucked in nice and tight by Philip Stein and the Philip Stein Sleep Bracelet. Startup Nation, getting quality sleep is super important, especially for those of us as entrepreneurs. I know for me, if I don't get enough quality sleep, Not only do I not perform well while working in my business or exercising, but also it really affects my mental health and that doubt starts to creep in. And that's the last thing we want as entrepreneurs. Also, with everything going on, good quality sleep is important to repair the body and support a good immune system. And that is why Startup Nation, I wear the Philip Stein Sleep Bracelet. The Philip Stein Sleep Bracelet uses natural frequency technology to reinforce our biomagnetic field to improve deep sleep, length of sleep, and overall sleep quality. This helps produce a healthier heart, regulate weight control, and helps strengthen the immune system, which helps destroy bacteria and viruses. Right now, when you go to philipstein.com, use code SLEEPEZ, and you will get 10% off the entire store. That's promo code SLEEP, capital E, capital Z. So if you are ready to be more productive in leading your business, go with the Philip Stein Sleep Bracelet, proven to be natural and safe to give you a better, deeper sleep. Hey, Startup Nation, before we get into today's content with today's amazing guest, I got my really good friend from our partners at Koya. I got my good friend Courtney here. Uh, on the ones and twos court how's it going it's going good it's always so good to hear from you awesome awesome so if you would we've been kind of uh, partnered together with uh, Koya and the things that you guys do, but I don't want to spill the beans. Kind of share what you guys do at Koya and the amazing stuff that you do. Yeah, I'd love to. So Koya stands for Kindness Sonia, and essentially it allows you to send messages either audio or video, to your friends or family that arrive at the right place in time. And it's that simple. You just, as a sender, you choose a location, your friend frequents, and the next time they arrive at that location, they'll receive your personal message. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. And, you know, I'm always fascinated, you know, how, you know, the origin stories and stuff like that. So how did Koya get its start? Because I know it's it's kind of a family business, isn't it? Yes, I love this story. I think it's kind of a little bit rare. (laughs) Um, So it's fun to talk about it. But essentially, we grew up in an innovative household and thought that it was very normal to be an entrepreneur. I thought that was a normal career path. Right. You know, and thanks to my dad and also my mom who supported my dad. So through both of them, we grew up thinking that that was just super normal. And as such, at my dad's birthday party about two years ago, we were sitting around a table talking about hopes and dreams for that year. And when we asked our dad, hey, what do you want to see happen this year? Without skipping a beat, he said that he would love to start a family business. And of course, he asked the typical entrepreneurial question, which is, what problems are y'all experiencing? And essentially, that's how Koya was birthed, is that all of us in some way had experienced that ache of wanting to be there for our friends and family that lived in different places, but not being able to be there. Um, And I think, you know, now with everything going on, that's a really common and familiar ache that we're beginning to hear more and more of is that desire to connect with people in meaningful ways. And that is essentially 
why we created Koya. Right. And I just love that. I, I really do. You know, with everything going on, just like you said, you know, uh, it, it, it's really important to still have that type of connection. Uh, with one another in society, with our family and friends and stuff like that. So I really appreciate it. But I know Koya now has a new initiative, something with essential workers. Yeah, something with essential workers and first responders. Yeah, kind of share with us a little bit about that if you would. I would love to. We, a few, I guess it was maybe a month and a half ago or so, along with everyone else, we were staying at home and had this you know, tool that allowed you to show up for people in unique ways in person, like if you were to go to a certain coffee shop or things like that. And suddenly we're all at home. And we, of course, had this desire to do something that would be meaningful. So we started thinking through different ways that we could thank essential workers, we could thank first responders. We were researching, trying to figure out meaningful ways that were also safe and realized that there wasn't really very many options and so we just decided that we'd create something super simple um, and it's called essentially kind and it's just an easy way for someone to when they feel that in their heart that overwhelming gratitude just go on there record a video audio message or you can actually type something now as well or or submit some art and just express your gratitude it's it's a way uh, to show collective thanks that oh i love that how how amazing have essential workers been during this time coordinate like what are some of the stories you've seen yeah i mean we i have some dear friends that are nurses right. and doctors some family as well and i think that's actually how it all started is that we right. were calling them up to thank them and some of them actually have asthma and some other health issues and they're still showing up to work every single day and we were obviously thinking about them while we're at home. Um, and so we'd call them up and just say, thank you so much. What what would be meaningful to you? How can we support you? And a lot of them were just saying, you even just letting us know that you're grateful means so much. Um, so that's actually even how the idea came about was just through some of those conversations because they have been so amazing and they are continuing to be so incredible day, day in and out, showing up with smiles on their faces and choosing to move forward and be there to support all of us. It's really incredible. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing all of that really important for sure. If you would just kind of share with Startup Nation, you know, how we can do one of those videos, how we can uh, connect with Koya and things of that nature. Yeah, of course. So you can go to essentiallykind.com and there's a little plus button that will tell you exactly what to do. It, it honestly takes less than three minutes and you can record a video right there or upload a video of your gratitude. And then of course you can also just write something if you feel more comfortable with that or upload some art if you're an artist. Um, there's multiple ways to show your gratitude. So that's how Essentially Kind works is just go to the website, essentiallykind.com, and then you can easily upload to any any category. Awesome stuff. And so I just want to say thank you so much for uh, kind of talking to us a little bit about Koya and the Essentially Kind program. And Startup Nation, uh, we have a link there in the show notes for easy access if you're listening to the replay uh, on the podcast. And let's let's go ahead and show those essential workers that how awesome they are and how dope we think they are for sure. So we're going to go ahead and take a break and we'll get to today's guest. And we want to thank once again the co-founder of Koya, Courtney, for coming on. Appreciate you, Courtney. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. No worries. Payoff.com sponsors this episode of The Startup Life. Startup Nation, you've tried balance transfers and budgeting, but high interest rates and unrelenting bill cycles make it almost impossible to get out of credit card debt on your own. Instead of another new savings technique, you need a clear path out of debt. And that's what a payoff loan can do. A payoff loan is a personal loan backed by member-centric credit unions designed to help you pay off your credit cards. With rates as low as 5.99% APR and loan amounts up to $35,000 with no hidden fees and personal customer service support from Payoff to help you reach your financial goals. Some of the benefits of a Payoff loan may also include a personal credit score boost, one monthly payment, and savings from lower interest rates. Go to Payoff.com forward slash The Startup Life to learn more. Checking loan rates won't affect your credit score. And if you listen to the replay on the podcast, the link is there in the show notes. Try something new. Pay off your credit card debt with Payoff. 
NMLS ID number 1396805. Now, all applicants may qualify. Loans only available within the United States. Loan is not available in all states. Payoff works with lending partners who originate the loans. Additional terms, conditions, and eligibility requirements may apply. More information is available at payoff.com forward slash the startup life. It's time to be about that life. The startup life. Here's your host, Dominic Lawson. All right, Startup Nation, so I hope you're ready to receive some value today. My name is Dominic Lawson, and this is The Startup Life, the show for entrepreneurs and career-minded professionals. You know, Startup Nation, with everything going on, we could all be a little bit more kind to people. But what if I told you that your kindness could be a superpower? Well, today's guest is going to tell us exactly how that can be. She is an Emmy Award winning journalist with broadcast experience as a television news anchor, interviewer and host and is currently a national news correspondent with ABC News and Good Morning America. She's also a philanthropic engineer, along with being the founder and president of Light, an organization that aims to shed light on nonprofit causes that may not get the luxury of name recognition or media support, but that are still changing the world one life at a time. And she is also the author of Your Hidden Superpower, the kindness that makes you unbeatable at work and connects you with anyone. She is Adrian Banker. AB, what's going on, superstar? How are you? Thanks for calling me AB. That's something that some people call me in the business as a nickname. So (laughs) Yeah, I kind of caught that in the book. I hope that was okay. (laughs) Totally. No, it just makes it seem like you're my long lost family or something. So it's cool. Fair enough. Fair enough. Are Are you ready to pour some knowledge in the startup nation today? You know what? I'm I'm ready not only to pour some knowledge, but I might even gain some knowledge myself because I find that every time you share, you end up learning if you're really open. So let's do it. I hear that. It's funny how that works. I definitely understand what you mean by that. So if, if you would just kind of share with us your origin story on your path and how you got to where you are today. Wow, that is a long story that would take probably longer than this podcast. Okay. But um, I'm from, <laughs> I was born in Los Angeles, um, raised in a big family. I'm one of seven kids in a small town outside of Sacramento, California. Mm-hmm. My mom really wanted to try to like shelter us, but I call myself the country mouse, city mouse, because I, from four years old, I knew I wanted to move back to LA. Gotcha. And I actually ended up going back to college at USC. Right. Um, and while there, I started hosting a talk show on campus. I was a communication major. I was not a journalism major. Okay. And of course you study news while you're at Annenberg. Um, It's one of the premier schools for journalism and communication, but I was still trying to figure out exactly how my life was going to unfold. And I ended up getting into news um, after hosting a children's educational show in Los Angeles for a PBS affiliate. Interesting. And um, yeah, I just I, now that I'm talking it out, I thought, well, we, we kind of had something in common with the educational sphere. Right. But yeah, I, I went to my hometown and I worked in Dallas, Fort Worth, Los Angeles and now New York and have just uh, had a wonderful ride, a very um, adventurous ride, I would say. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing all of that for sure. I, I want to ask you this because, you know, I, I know we're going to talk you know, greatly about the book. And once again, Startup Nation, the book is Your Hidden Superpower. And it's actually out today. If you can look in the link in the show notes uh, to purchase that book, if you listen to the replay on the podcast. You know, because you talked about in the book how competitive the industry is a little bit of, you know, and stuff like that. Kind of share with us a little bit more about that, if you would. Well, I think that every industry is competitive. For you sure. know, I. For sure. When we when we go to school, there's not really this lesson that we learn in life about how to handle right. being good, right, mm. or being the best, right. or when you feel like you are maybe the underdog and how do you get on top? I mean, but yet everybody's endeavoring to be amazing. Gotcha. Right. And so I just remember um, being in business and in in particular, my business is broadcasting right. and this, and making this firm decision at one point that I would not endeavor to compete mm. with anybody in my business. I just, I put it down because I watched people do it. I'd seen it happen. I'd seen the movies and TV shows. Cause I mean, you look at a lot of movies now, they, they focus on, you know, the media industry. Absolutely. <laughs> um, yes. it, historically, I mean, from Superman to newsroom to morning glory right. to, you know, so 
Um, for me, it was like, you know what, how can I make the other person look good? And I mean, I, I lend a lot of that know-how or ideology to my mentor um, because he was just like, Adrian, show everybody that you're on their side and emote that. And it's a winning recipe. And so I was a young traffic reporter, a traffic anchor, technically. So that means I was the one that popped up on your TV screen in your morning or evening newscast that told you how the freeways looked. And I told somebody back way back when, you know, I show people the way to go. Well, I've always been the oldest of the oldest of seven kids. And then gotcha. being in the business, I was often the younger one, the youngest on the set, but I was still showing people the way to go. And then I ended up mentoring a lot of people myself, consulting. So I've just learned that if you show people that you're on their side, then they will look good and you'll look good for making them look good. Gotcha. And that's part of the kindness quotient. I hear that. And, you know, and that's always very interesting. It's almost as if, you know, they kind of feel like you're invested in them. And as far as like, you know, shining the light on them and investing in their greatness. So I'm always fascinated by that. Well, I mean, anything you do right. should be invested in. For sure. You should be fully present. And, you know, my whole ambition when I go to work and I talk about this in the book, mm -hmm. it's something again, I, I picked up because I was I was coached in this. You're going to work, but why are you really there? You know, you have to make money or you desire to make money and, and make more money as you get more experience. You desire to be profitable, successful, marketable, relevant, right? right? All these different words that we use in business, sure. but we also want to live with purpose. And so how can we do that in any impactful way if we're not doing it in the day to day? In the little things, you know, it's kind of like the habit of making your bed. There's that video that went viral a few years ago where um, you make your bed and you feel like you've accomplished something. And then like everything else will fall into place because you made your bed. You know, right. um, there's science to it. If we're really going to be world changers, game changers in other people's lives on a, on a massive scale as corporations and as individuals, right. then we have to become game changers in the day to day in what looks like mundane small, insignificant actions. And that starts in the hallways. That starts on the Zoom calls. That starts when you're making sure that you sound kind in an email or text message, because all of that develops muscle memory for true impact. Right. Right. Thank you for sharing all of that for sure. You, you know, I wanted to ask you this because you, you talked uh, in the book kind of growing up that your parents kind of taught you about being kindness and having that empathy and stuff like that. And I imagine that as you get older, we all get older. A lot of that stuff kind of like, I don't know say gets beat out of us, but we kind of lose that <laughs> a little bit, you know, because like life gets hard, right? You know, life yes. gets hard. And so a lot of times we lose some of that. So I guess I'm curious. What was it about like your parents teaching and your coaches and mentors and stuff like that that has allowed you to kind of not only hold on to that part of your life and it become your superpower, but also kind of like shine that out to the world? Because it seems like just like, you know, bad attitudes are infectious. Kindness can be infectious yeah. as well. Yeah. And, and we we really should really enjoy the kind actions and and notions and thoughts and meditating on the kind things people have done for us. It, it just puts us in a different headspace. Right. But I've, I've had so many people like tell me, well, I still think kindness is considered a weakness. Right. And the truth is I'm not perfect. I'm not Miss Pollyanna telling you, Oh, I, I never have an unkind thought. I never do anything unkind. Right. But what I did is when I was unkind or when I was thinking unkind or when I saw other people be unkind, I realized that that develops a habit. Mm. You know, you don't become jaded by one thing that happens to you. Usually it's a series of actions and, and his, you know, things that happen in your past that ends up leading to you just burning out emotionally and losing right. hope in yourself or in other people. And so for me, being in broadcasting was a great gift because I saw how if you were to take two people who are sitting on a news desk and their mics are hot, right. but we're in a commercial break, the conversations that you have can be heard by all these people. It just made me really conscious that if we all acted like we had a hot mic on us all the time, mm. 
we would act differently unless we started getting desensitized to the fact that other people were aware of what we were saying, which happens. It happens in every industry. It happens when you're out on the floor of your warehouse right. and you realize that you're yelling at somebody and that everybody can hear your conversation. Right. You know, we're in, a, we're in an era where people can pull out a camera on their phone anywhere you go and record you. Absolutely. And Absolutely. people can go viral without even really thinking about it. You know, any one of us can have something said that could be viewed thousands or millions of times, millions of times. So my thinking is over time, watching the media world evolve right. and watching how we conduct ourselves at work, I started to realize how important it was for me to create a habit for being kind, for mm -hmm. to create a habit and to teach other people because it would benefit us not only in the long run, but even in the short term that we wouldn't be afraid of being ourselves and saying the wrong thing. We would be free to be ourselves because our motivation would be kindness. So we wouldn't have to walk on eggshells around people like so many people do today. I appreciate that. And, you know, it's funny you mention that and keeping with the the kind of the yelling at an employee at a warehouse example, because in the book, <laughs> you talk about like having these like kindness trigger words or phrases to kind of remind you in that yeah. moment to like maybe mm, let's pump the brakes on that a little bit. Right. Kind of share with yeah. us that doctrine a little bit, if you would, Adrian. A lot of times when we get taught to do something for coping mechanisms. Right. It's in like a workbook or it was a class that we took or it was in a therapy session. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. it's a lot. <laughs> oh, for sure. And you've got to be like, okay, let me go back to my notes. Let me go back to my, you know, let me go back on vacation. But what I realized is I needed triggers that would take like a millisecond mm. to remind me to snap to kindness, snap back to reality, snap out of rage, snap out of whatever feeling I was having that could be negative and could cause a negative domino effect. That's what I'm saying. Like, gotcha. I think in life we move so fast now, mm. we move at hyperspeed that we need those little positive triggers in order to stay sane. And so the story that I tell all over the world and I told in the book is uh, one of our sound engineers at one of my stations I worked at came into work and snapped at me. And I wanted to snap back, but I, you know, I stopped myself that particular time and I arrested myself right. and I found out later that his mother had passed the night before. Mm. And so that stuck with me so much that you never know what people are going through that lesson of empathy. And I said, you know what, from now on, if anybody snaps at me, I'm going to think somebody must have died. And it's my psychological trigger so that I can continue to be compassionate, even when somebody's barking at me or yelling or acting, you know, different than I would want. Um, and in this day and hour with so much pressure on us, especially in light of what we've just historically went through as a country, as Absolutely. a world, Absolutely. people are tender. People are raw. We need to give others a lot more mercy at this particular time and getting those positive triggers for kindness, programming ourselves that we have a knee jerk response to kindness and calm under pressure is what this industry my industry, anybody's industry, tech, medicine, education, right. contracting, it doesn't matter where you work. The world is demanding that we do not act cruel to people. Mm -hmm. They really do not want it. I, I think that we're going to have to start seeing businesses that are more compassionate and they're going to have to focus more on prepping their employees for how to respond compassionately when the situation is emotional, when tempers do rise because they inevitably will. Thank you for sharing that. And you're, you're so right. Cause we're seeing a, a lot. We are seeing some businesses, you know, who are acting compassionately and stuff like that. And we are yeah. seeing some business where it's kind of like, uh, nope, business as usual in an unusual world, which is baffling to me, but you know, that's neither here nor there. Mm -hmm. uh, once again, we're talking to Adrian Banker, the author of your hidden superpower. Uh, I, I want to ask you this because you talk about how kindness and being nice are kind of two different things, you know, kind of yes. share with us a little bit about that. Cause that, and I, I think that's often, you know, they're kind of like, you know, used as synonyms, but you say they're right. a little bit different. So kind of share with us a little bit about that. Well, I, I am a geek when it comes to dictionaries and I look <laughs> up words and word meetings and, cause gotcha. I, I really needed, you know what I'm saying? I needed to like, well, if I asked you what kindness is, right you would have a different definition than somebody else I asked on the street. I right. found out everybody has a different definition of kindness, all positive, right? but differently defined. Okay. And so nice, I looked up as a word in the oldest dictionary I could find. 
And it was precision, politeness, exactness. Mm -hmm. And I thought about how many times we walk through the hallway and people say hello, but there's nothing to that hello. It's a rushed politeness, sometimes obligatory. I describe it as a hello in the hall versus kindness being a warm embrace. And embrace doesn't have to be a physical embrace. It's you are warmly engaged with that person and you're conscious of where they possibly could be and you care enough to find out where they're at. Right. You know, a lot of times people say, how are you today? Mm. And I say, it takes about the same amount of breath to ask, what can I do for you today? Mm. Totally different question. Right. You'll get a totally different response. Right. And kindness is defined as not just helping people, but making them happy by granting their desires. And again, this is using old dictionaries because I needed a deeper understanding of that word because our dictionaries today sometimes can lend themselves to more of the kindness to the needy, which we all need to do. Kindness to those who are possibly less fortunate, a sympathy. Mm. Um, and I think that kindness has to be broadened in our culture. We know it in our gut, you know, we know it inside that we should be kind to all people, but we need to demonstrate that more so that we're not just a whole bunch of nice people smiling through the pain, through the busyness, through the workday. Right. But we're actually engaged with people because I want to be the one who knows the red flag of the person, the coworker who's going through depression, right. who could be borderline suicidal. Mm -hmm. I want to be that aware and vigilant. And people say, well, how can you do that? As you practice kindness more intentionally, and I realized it has to go beyond random acts of kindness, which I absolutely love and I've participated in. Right. Random acts of kindness are to me like a big lottery or like a big drawing or like a surprise you see on television where people are just like shocked and, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Right. This one select family or one select group gets this great prize, gets this great kindness. I want to make kindness so mass appeal worthy. You know, I want to make it famous. I want people to put it in their calendar, just like they would put their dentist appointment, just like they would put their annual, you know, event that they like to do, but also their daily event, their weekly event, their monthly event. Mm. Um, it has to become so much more prevalent and prioritized in our society in order for us to reap the maximum benefits of, of that. And it just takes some small adjustments. A B, I appreciate you sharing that because it's like what you talk about is, uh, you know, you talk about the random acts of kindness as opposed to like a system of being kind, a system and a mm -hmm. program that's a little bit more long sustaining and stuff like that, which not only affects not you know your mood, but also the mood of the people around you, the people, the mood of the people you work with, the mood of your family. I appreciate you sharing like the difference between like the system versus like the, the random acts of kindness, which is not bad, like you said. But I think, like you said, that that system is, is very important for sure. Yeah. And it really, I describe it as an identity. Right. Right. So you move from lifestyle to identity. Uh, for example, I don't know. Do you work out a lot? I don't know if you do. I try my best. I, I do. Work okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I could say the same thing. I try gotcha. my best. Right. But there are people that I know who work out religiously. Right. Like they work out every single day without fail. Mm -hmm. It's become a part of who they are. When you think of those friends of ours or family members of ours who are always at the gym right. or who are always golfing, it's like, that's who they are. Mm. And you can institute kindness in the same way. It's just a matter of making it who you are. And chapter two of the book is one of my favorite chapters because when I realized that my why, mm -hmm. why am I here? What is my purpose? What am I supposed to be doing with my life? Right. Who am I supposed to help? Comes back to who am I? Mm. And the answer to that question is always, I am kind. I hear that. I hear and that. it's it, it, if when we look at the definition of kind, it's thoughtfulness and consideration, but it is also nature, natural propensity, and determination, like a genus and species. Right. If individuals within your organization or within your company identify with an identity of kindness, mm -hmm. then they will make decisions rooted in kindness and not just the bottom line. Gotcha. They will be more attentive to the needs of your customers, which you want. Absolutely. You know, we, we want soft skills to be at work with our, our, and now they're called essential skills, I've been told, but, um, you know, communication, empathy, like you talked about, right. um, being able to be flexible, leadership skills, all of that is rooted in the foundation of kindness, which is your highest and best self. Kind is what you always wanted to be when you grew up, 
really. Right. You wanted to be the best you. You wanted to be good to people and children. And even if you say, oh, no, 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 that wasn't me. Inside of us all, I believe, is that potential mm. and that desire to have kindness shown to us because we're all asking for something. Right. And kindness is all about answering people's questions. Mm. If it's, I need it, I really, where do I go to get a coffee? Which way is it to the mall? Right. I really want somebody who will appreciate me. When am I going to find love? Mm. All of us have these desires inside of us. It is an amazing thing when you start to answer people's asks. It's powerful. It connects you with people. No, for sure. You said something that, you know, we're all looking for that kindness. And I'll, I'll, I'll imagine we're all looking for that example of what that looks like as mm -hmm. well. That Like that being the difference between the reactive of kindness and proactive yeah. kindness. When people read the book, they'll see the difference between trying to be too nice and right. trying to be nice and, sure. and kindness. And I had somebody say to me, well, there's a, there's a negative repercussion to kindness, you know, and I would say, right. no, there's not genuine kindness doesn't have any ill side effects. Mm. It's nutritive. It, it, it makes you better. It's, it's wellness. It's wholeness. It, it brings out the, the and it highlights the talents and the gifts that you already have inside of you. Right. But if some people are going to use, you know, a kind act as a way to become, you know, viral, popular. Um, that's not my business. It's not any of our business, right? Okay. It's like, what are you about? And one of the biggest things that I talk about in the book is I can't let other people's decisions determine who I'm going to be. Fair enough. I have to be me in spite of crisis. If the world stops. I started a campaign with Good Morning America. Mm -hmm. and it was all about first writing myself a letter. Um, what would I do? in spite of the world ending or stopping in a sense, as we know it, then who am I going to be anyway? Right. What kindness am I going to show regardless of what's going on in the world? And it's the same thing on the job. If everybody is a hater, which they're not, right. and they think of you as a pushover because you're kind or fake because you're kind, there's the paradoxical commandments, which mother Teresa is often attributed with saying, right. uh, but it was another author. And, it's, you know, people are going to, you know, judge you and think that you're, you have impure motives. Be kind anyway. <laughs> you know, right. um, if we can do that, then we'll model the kind of kindness that we want our children to have because we want children who can stand on their own, who don't just move because of peer pressure. We want employees who will do the right thing with integrity and character, regardless of whether other coworkers, you know, are making wrong decisions or doing things that are inappropriate. Right. That's what we want. And so if we can teach people genuine kindness, it heightens the level of responsibility that each individual has to determine who they will be. I hear that. Regardless of the circumstances. I heard that. Thank you for sharing that. You know, Startup Nation, in the book, you know, Adrian shares, you know, many stories, uh, you know, from her career, uh, you know, of, of kindness and what that looks like. From I really love the one with uh, the young lady who wanted to be a flight attendant and how the airline went above and beyond <laughs> yeah. to kind of, you know, <laughs> make those pictures for her mom in South Korea and stuff like that. But there's also the story of when you were negotiating for a job and maybe it didn't go your way and you had to yeah. kind of go back. Back to uh, waiting tables at a restaurant or something like that. And in that story, I found that it's also kind to let people be kind to you, which I yes. thought was interesting. Can you share that story a little bit with us, A.B.? Yeah. So, you know, again, people often question whether I really believe that kindness gives you an edge in business. Right. And I say, yes, it does, because how many of us have fallen, lost everything, know, made a mistake in negotiating and it just falls through big facts and we hit rock bottom. And then now what? And we think from, you know, common and popular belief, a lot of times, at least I know I did, people just pick themselves up, dust themselves off and go in a different direction right. a lot of times. But for me, um, this particular opportunity, I was again, being mentored and coached and was told, go to work, like <laughs> go back <laughs> There was no like defined, detailed protocol for how to get back once you lost a job that you were going after. But I knew that I belonged. And when you know you belong, then you rely on other people's kindness to either hold the door open for you or open it again. You know what I'm saying? Like when you know, you know what? I am supposed to be there. I don't know how it's going to work out now, but I'm supposed to be there. Right. And so um, it ended up happening that I was a hostess at a restaurant making minimum wage. And the person who I'd 
been in failed negotiations with walked into the restaurant and saw me and was like, what are you doing here? (laughs) And I said, well, I'm a host on TV and I'm a host here. Let me show you to your seat. (laughs) Right. And it was, you know, a very, thank God, short lived period of time, but agonizing because you have to humble yourself And then you have to decide, I'm going to be strong in who I am. And again, this is when I realized that lesson of you have to be kind no matter what's going on around you. Because I had to be confident in that moment, no matter what money I was not making. You know, being a a hostess at a restaurant was not my ideal or dream or anything. But I had to determine who I was was meant to be on that TV screen. And even though my circumstances were defying that, I still had to decide who I would be anyway. And that particular woman who again walked in and I sat for lunch ended up coming back and offering me the same deal or a different deal under different circumstances. But the point was, is that I basically was placed right back where I should have been in the beginning, but it was because she opened the door again Mm -hmm. and she believed in me or she changed her mind or she never changed her mind. She just realized how much I wanted it, but whatever happened, it was her kindness to me to come back and to help me out and to say, you know what? You do belong. I was convinced of it. Right. I just had to fight for it. And, and it was in relying on that kindness. You know, I, I realized in my journey of writing this book that a lot of us, when we first start, think we are so good and so talented Mm. and we are, you know, we are gifted, we are bright, but we're not so good that they couldn't get somebody more experienced than us. Right. Right. And it's really not so much of us being so amazing as it is they're kind enough to give this young man or young woman a shot. Right. That's what I've realized. And it's like, we think it's so much of our hard work and hustle and talent. But really in the in the beginning and throughout your whole career, I've seen it's really about those people who will say, you know what, I'm going to give you a shot. I believe in you. I see something in you. That's kind. All right, Startup Nation. So we're going to go ahead and take a quick break. We got to pay some bills. Once again, my name is Dominic Lawson and you're listening to The Startup Life. This episode of The Startup Life is tucked in nice and tight by Philip Stein and the Philip Stein Sleep Bracelet. Startup Nation, getting quality sleep is super important, especially for those of us as entrepreneurs. I know for me, if I don't get enough quality sleep, not only do I not perform well while working in my business or exercising, but also it really affects my mental health and that doubt starts to creep in. And that's the last thing we want as entrepreneurs. Also, with everything going on, good quality sleep is important to repair the body and support a good immune system. And that is why, Startup Nation, I wear the Philip Stein Sleep Bracelet. The Philip Stein Sleep Bracelet uses natural frequency technology to reinforce our biomagnetic field to improve deep sleep, length of sleep, and overall sleep quality. This helps produce a healthier heart, regulate weight control, and helps strengthen the immune system, which helps destroy bacteria and viruses. Right now, when you go to philipstein.com, use code SLEEPEZ, and you will get 10% off the entire store. That's promo code SLEEP, capital E, capital Z. So if you are ready to be more productive in leading your business, go with the Philip Stein Sleep Bracelet, proven to be natural and safe to give you a better, deeper sleep. This episode of The Startup Life is brought to you by the Risk Management Society. Startup Nation, the Risk Management Society, or RIMS, is a global organization dedicated to the profession of risk management. For nearly 60 years, RIMS has delivered the latest strategies and resources that allow risk professionals to grow, innovate, and succeed in any business. RIMS works with industry leaders to produce content and online training that business professionals turn to. Topics include business continuity, cyber risk, risk management techniques, the fundamentals of insurance, and more. There is also a private members-only site where people can discuss sensitive issues and get honest answers. Members have been leaning on each other as we all navigate this global pandemic. 
If you're concerned about the safety of your employees and the sustainability of your organization, you need the resources and connections RIMS provides. Learn more at go.rims.org forward slash startup life. If you're listening to the replay on the podcast, we have a link there in the show notes. You can save 25% off a year long membership. So if you're ready to get the resources and strategies you need to manage risk, go with RIMS and join their global network of over 10,000 members across more than 60 countries. Support for The Startup Life is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-belt grooming. Startup Nation, personal grooming is super important, not only from a hygiene standpoint, but also from a confidence one as well. And that is why you need to have a tight haircut and, well, a nice groomed undercarriage as well. And when doing that, you don't want to use the same razor, do you? That's just absurd. And this is why our friends at Manscaped have given you another option. Introducing the all-new Lawnmower 3.0 by Manscaped. This lightweight and waterproof razor features precision engineered blades for safe trimming in sensitive areas and a 7,000 RPM motor with quiet stroke technology. Ladies, Father's Day is just around the corner and this will make a perfect gift for that guy on the go. Use code the Startup Life in all caps for 20% off and free shipping on your brand new Lawnmower 3.0 at manscaped.com. We have a link there in the show notes for easy access if you listen to the replay on the podcast. And while you're there, be sure to check out all the other products from manscaped.com as well. So for proper manscaping without the fear of hurting anything, go with Manscaped. Trust me, your family of jewels will thank you. All right, Startup Nation, welcome back as we continue our conversation with today's guest here on The Startup Life. Startup Nation, when you read the book, there's so many, I, I'm just going to call them Adrianisms, if you will, because there's just like these amazing quotes uh, that you definitely w- want to pick up on. For one, I love kindness does not try to impress, but it's impressive. And then there's mm-hmm. another one. Uh, when he's talking about the, the young lady uh, you know, who wanted to be the flight attendant, which I just absolutely love. Kindness does not break the rules. It expands the imagination. And, and yeah. you know, when we're talking about entrepreneurship and business, we can all be a little bit more imaginative. And even in our career, we can all be a little bit more imaginative. We can all be a little bit more creativity. But I never thought kindness would kind of lead to that. So I, I appreciate you sharing that value with us in the book, Adrian, for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting because I say that that's really what brings innovation and creativity. Mm-hmm. Kindness cl- brings clarity. You know, there's a reason why they call kindness or kind people a breath of fresh air. Right. If you've ever heard somebody say, oh, you are such a breath of fresh air. It clears your mind. It clears the room. It, it makes you focus on positive, happy thoughts. Mm-hmm. And when you're thinking like that, you can be more creative and imaginative. And when you're focused on making someone's dream come true, the young lady that you brought up in the book, um, she's a Korean exchange student. She had come to the state, stayed with a friend of mine in Texas. And another friend of mine had rented her a flight attendant costume from a costume shop Mm. because she had dreamed of being a flight attendant. And so that got my mind turning because I thought, wow, he was willing to invest in painting this picture for this young lady. And so I made a, a phone call to an airline and I said, hey, Do you think we could take some pictures of her in her flight attendant costume on the plane just to kind of add to this vision that she's building in her heart? Right. And they said, well, do you, we'll do you one better. We'll have her have a private tour of our flight training facility for all of our flight attendants. Mm -hmm. And so I shot the whole thing. I didn't tell her what we were doing. We showed up. I took out my iPhone. I recorded the whole thing on an iPhone. She was amazed. And we were able to cut that into a, a package that my then executive producer agreed to put on te- television in Dallas Fort Worth. So it ran on the news and then we sent that to her mother and it was just a really fun story. And I was, again, it was the kindness of my executive producer to allow me to do something spontaneous like that Absolutely. just on an iPhone. Um, no, no professional photographers, but it was expanding her imagination. And it, again, she didn't belong there. If you think about it, she was an exchange student with no connection to this flight training facility, still in school. But because I was inspired by somebody else's kindness with the costume, (laughs) it made me think of ways to get even more imaginative. For sure. 
For sure. Thank you for sharing that. Startup Nation, once again, the book is Your Hidden Superpower, the kindness that makes you unbeatable at work and connects you with anyone. And once again, that book is out today. We have a link in the show notes for easy access if you listen to the replay on the podcast to purchase uh, that book. Adrian, I want to kind of shift gears a little bit because I know you mentor young people and stuff like that. And with everything going on with COVID-19, I want to ask you this. If you were giving a commencement speech around this time of, you know, of year with everything going on, how would you inspire the class of 2020? Because, you know, I imagine there's many of them are trying to figure out what's next. What, what do I do now with everything going on? What I would tell the class of 2020 is the same thing I would tell anyone who has gone through those feelings of isolation at this particular point in our history, which has been, again, unprecedented or in any time prior to this where they felt that isolation, that loneliness, that stuck feeling. Uh, feeling of disconnection. Mm. Answer two questions. Who do you want to help? Mm. Who does your heart break for? Who, are, who is your compassion going for right now? And what problem do you want to solve? Because once you find out who you want to help, then you have a bit of radar or um, a metal detector for the treasure that's inside of you already for what magnetizes you for solutions, for answering the problems of this world. Once you get the focus off of you and put it on other people, it again brings that clarity and that innovation and that connection to what you really are meant to do. Because all of us, again, is asking for something and all of us is is destined, all of us are destined to be problem solvers, to be game changers, to be innovators, to be inventive. And It's easier to help someone else with their problem than to help yourself, no matter what you're facing. So answer those two questions. Who is your heart breaking for right now? Who do you want to help? And what problem do you want to solve? And you will start to design your own treasure map to the life you've always wanted. I hear that. I heard that. Thank you for sharing all of that. So I want to ask you this, you know, when reading the book, I talked, there was a story about you singing and stuff on set and things of that. And so (laughs) whether it be like Bruce Springsteen or Mariah Carey. So I want to ask you this, what's it, what's in your phone right now? What are you listening to right now? What's, what's, what's like, you know, giving you that earworm a little bit right now in your phone? Oh my gosh. (laughs) Well, I, it's so funny because I listen to so many different kinds of songs, but can I just tell you the song of 2020 is, um, the song from Oklahoma, the musical. Really? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Because, well, because every year, you know, different people have words for, t- for the year, you right. know, right? Like right. you set your goals, you set your intentions. And mine uh, was a song because part of the reason why the book came about is because I was on this quest for how would you act if everything was working out for you? Because a lot of times we focus on our problems or our barriers and we're motivated by barriers. Right. And I just was like, you know what? What if I didn't have to figure anything out and everything was working for me? So it might sound a little like random, but I started singing this song in 2020 because it's it works so well for me to, to conjure up ideas of what it would be like if everything was working out for me. Right. I started singing, oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. Gotcha. I got a beautiful feeling. Everything's going my way. And when I did that, it gave me a mantra and a word and a song that everything is going to work out. And yeah, I don't listen to that on my phone, gotcha. but I'm answering your question because gotcha. that's the song that my earworm right now. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. I, I appreciate that. I, I wasn't expecting the, the nice, lovely vocals you just gave us, but thank you so much. We appreciate that uh, for sure. Uh, I, Again, I, I you sing a lot on set. Gotcha. So. gotcha. Fair enough. I, 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 I could sing you Will Smith's same song too, but we'll, we'll leave that for next time. Fair enough. Fair enough. Thank you for saying that for sure. I, I want to ask you this. You know, I want I want you to share with us about your your NGO light. You know, loving individuals giving help together. Kind of share with us a little bit about that and the program focus there. Well, it was just a matter of, of starting something. Okay. You know, I think you have a post on your uh, Instagram about uh, how the kind of tools that you have used to okay. produce this podcast. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. and for me, does that, does that sound familiar? It sounds very I went familiar. on your Instagram account. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Thanks for the follow. I'm going to have to follow you back. I'm going to do that right now. But go ahead. I'm sorry. You're <laughs> Well, I mean, I come from a community of, you know, giving back and nonprofits. And so for me, I realized that, you know, 
what I like to do is shine a light on things and perspectives. And so um, there are a lot of nonprofits that don't get the attention that they normally would because they just don't have the history or the, the publicity that some others do. It doesn't take away from any of the other ones, but I just would like to help shine a light on people who are making a big difference in this world. And I believe that between the nonprofit and this book that, there's a way to show kindness to so many more people now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, I want to ask you this, and this is something we ask everybody that comes on the show. What's your entrepreneurial superpower and why? Connection. Connection. I yeah. I believe that everything is, everything entrepreneurial is, is, and everything in life is about connecting and, you know, beyond passing up business cards or sending them digitally. Um, when you can really see somebody and you can give them a chance to feel safe, then mm. you can establish an authenticity and a trust. Um, it's something I talk about in the book. Right. And um, I think that for me, it's all about people. It will be more and more increasingly about people um, and businesses that can connect with their customers, with their viewers, and show them that they're trustworthy will do the best and fare the best in the marketplace. I hear that. Thank you for sharing that. And before I ask the last question, I just want to say thank you Age, so much for coming on the startup life. We definitely appreciated your time and your value and this amazing book. Once again, startup nation, that book is your hidden superpower. The kindness that makes you unbeatable at work connects you with anyone. Once again, we have a link there in the show notes. If you listen to the replay on the podcast. Now, AB, I'm actually going to turn the microphone over to you because there's somebody out there in Startup Nation that needs a little help with kind of displaying that kindness and sharing that kindness uh, with the world. Kind of share with us, you know, a few words of encouragement to take us out for today. Well, Startup Nation, I just want to encourage you to start scheduling kindness into your day. You know, put it on your calendar, just like you would brush your teeth, just like you would make sure to call your mom or call your friend or, you know, check in with your clients. I want you to think about ways that you can get creative with kindness and ways that are very easy. Right now, a lot of people in different states aren't able to go out to a restaurant. So you're not able to take them out to lunch, but you can send them a deposit of money into their account and say, hey, lunch is on me today. Mm -hmm. You know, whether you're ordering it through Postmates or you're having it at home, just lunch is on me. Or take them out to coffee virtually by depositing money into their Venmo or Cash App. I think that's an easy way to be kind from your couch or from your office. And, you know, consider kindness something like your fitness regimen. I I tell people sometimes, you know, kindness is my keto. It's the way that I am consciously putting into myself, investing in myself and investing in others, something that will feed me down the road, will produce the benefits and and the lifestyle that I need to stay healthy and well, physiologically, psychologically, mentally, emotionally, as I'm meditating on kindness in a way that is what some people might call methodical, I'm creating that muscle memory. And so that's what I want for you, that as you are building your business, as you are building a brand, make sure to be sure that it's rooted in an identity of kindness And that identity is fostered by the actions that you take every day, every week, every month, and not just once in a while. And so add to your phone reminders that you are going to show someone kindness. Call someone just because. This could be a client or a colleague, but let them know you're thinking about them. It takes five minutes. Shoot a selfie video on your phone and in 10 seconds, just tell somebody how amazing they are. Press send. These are things that you can actually set calendar reminders of that you can do every day that don't cost you any money. Sometimes it costs you a little money and you can make a huge difference. And then the one other thing I would say to do is to foster generosity among your teams. Right now, there are so many hurting people in the world. There are people that work for you who feel hopeless, but check in with your team members, ask them who their heart's breaking for, ask them who they pay attention to most on social media, or if they watch the news, what stories are resonating the most with them. Find out what their heart's beating for right now and channel that into positive energy. Have a brainstorming session. Take a pause from the work of the day, even though there's so much work to do and so much hustle and say, you know what, let's brainstorm ways to solve the problem that Amy cares about or that Matt cares about and discuss it among your team. And perhaps that 
that's a way for you all to schedule kindness in a practical way every month, every quarter, so that you can meet the needs emotionally and the world dreamer, world changer goals inside of your team members. Because this generation cares about kindness and cares about making an impact more than ever. As you invest in them, they will be even more invested in you. I hear that. I hear that. Thank you so much for sharing that. And it reminds me of our partners over at Koya who em- embrace you to uh, show you care when you can't be there. Koya, our partner agent is all about giving kindness when you can't be there in a certain place. So I appreciate you kind of setting me up uh, for that for sure. Uh, <laughs> no problem. No worries. So that's going to wrap up our time here on the Startup Life. We want to thank Adrian Banker for coming on the show. Thank you so much, ma'am, for sharing your, your wisdom and your value, uh, you know, for sure. And as always, Startup Nation is if you have an idea be about that life the startup life if you want to let us know what you think about our show have an idea for a show topic or would like to advertise on our show send us a message on the startup life podcast facebook page and while you are there like and follow our page as well it's a great way for us to engage with the startup nation and really grow our community the link is there in the show notes subscribe to the show as it can be heard on apple Podcasts, google play Stitcher Radio, Spotify, or even on your Facebook timeline or any other platform you like to get your podcast. If you are listening on Apple Podcasts and you find our content valuable, please give us a five-star rating as it will help us climb the charts and help more people find our show. You can also listen to the show on the Startup Life Podcast new website. There you will find the all-new startup blog where I write on many topics that are interesting and helpful to you on your path to entrepreneurship. And hey, If you have an idea, be about that life, the startup life.